So today is going to be a little bit of a different kind of video. Um, I've mentioned before that my family is in the grieving process. And so I wanted to talk a little bit about that today in hopes of being able to share a little bit about um, how I have been processing grief, um, how others have helped me process grief, and the hope would be that it could help some other people out there. Um, I often describe grief as it, it feels like this huge mountain in front of you that you know there's another side to that mountain, you just can't see it. Um, and we are right now, we are, you know, we're well into this process. We're a year into this process. Um, some of you out there, you know, you may, it may be a lot newer for you. Um, maybe some of you have very old griefs that you've processed. So certainly if you want to share anything in the comments that you think will be helpful to Christian people as they grieve, I would appreciate you sharing. Um, so, you know me, I always turn to scripture and I turn to um, other Christians who are very advanced in their faith, and uh, I've learned from them about how to process grief. So, Nancy Guthrie is a Christian woman, and she is an author, and she knows a lot about grief, and she shares her experience. This is one of her books, Holding On to Hope. And she takes this book and she really goes through um, how the book of Job helped her. I am in Job 1, and we're looking here at verse 20. Job has just learned of all his losses, and we see, Then Job arose and rent his mantle and shaved his head and fell down upon the ground, and worshipped, and said, Naked came I out of my mother's womb, and naked shall I return thither. The Lord gave, and the Lord hath taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. In all this Job sinned not. So if you read Nancy Guthrie's book, she really goes through this in an amazing way. The way that she points out what's happening in these verses. First is that Job openly mourns. I found that really important that you don't have to stifle it away, pretend like everything's okay. Um, God was pleased with Job's response. Um, it is okay to openly mourn. Um, something else that Job does is that he falls down and he worships God. I think there are times that that can be hard to do. Um, especially when we're grieving so profoundly and so confused, but that is a response that God was pleased with and that I think can really help us. Um, we see in these verses, so much is happening in these verses. Um, Job is acknowledging that everything that he had was given to him by God, and he still blesses the name of the Lord, and he does not... Um, he does not launch an attack on God. He, he says, blessed be the name of the Lord. And throughout he sins not. So that was really helpful for me to have all that pointed out to me, um, to help show me, to help direct my response and to help direct my grieving process. We see in Job chapter six, we see Job really struggling. And at one point he goes as far as to say, even that it would please God to destroy me. So I am led to believe that it is normal to have feelings that you yourself wish almost, um, wish almost that your days on this earth were numbered, that, that the pain can be so bad. Um, but we're also told in scripture, we're, we're told a number of things. The Lord is our refuge and our strength. We also know that the Lord has sent us here on a mission that we are to fulfill and complete. Um, so we have to keep that in mind too. It is not our time to go home. If it was our time to go home, he would call us. Um, we know, we know from knowing the Lord that we have to fulfill our purpose here on the earth, but it is natural. It is normal. When you're suffering so much, when we look at the story of Job, to just to just wish that somehow it could all be over, 
even if it meant us being called home too. And I think about what Paul said too in his letter to the Philippians. He said, for me, to live is Christ and to die is gain. For us, dying to resolve our pain, well, that would be the easy way out. We know that we would go home and we would be with the Lord. But the fact is, to live is Christ. We still have to live for Christ. So I also understand that God will not allow meaningless suffering. We can rest assured in that. There is a holy purpose in our pain. Now, I don't think the final um, understanding, full understanding of it will happen until we are with God in heaven. But sometimes we can understand certain things while we're here on earth. We have to ask ourselves, how will God get the greater glory? God can use anything for his purposes. He can use anything for good. He can take anything and turn it around and God can get the glory. So we might want to ask ourselves that when it comes to our losses and our grieving. Is there something good that can come out of those processes? And I think we should really be encouraged to think of the cross. That is our ultimate example of something that was just, on the one hand, so heinous, so horrible, meant for the ultimate evil. Yet, look what was done through that process. All believers are completely redeemed through that process and can spend an eternity in heaven with God. So the one thing that was meant for the greatest evil, God turned into the greatest good. We have to keep that in our minds. I think about also uh, what is probably my favorite verse in all of scripture. It's Romans 8 verse 28, and we know that all things work together for good for those who love God, for those who are the called according to his purpose. So God does always work all things together for our good in the end. Um, so we have to consistently be reminded of that and encouraged by that. Um, I've been encouraged by people online as well who I, I have watched them suffer just, um, tremendous loss that's beyond my comprehension, yet they will still remain so faithful. And they will say, you know, God is writing this story. And I've had to, you know, wrap my mind around that. God, yeah, God really is writing this story, even through all the grief. He's writing all of our stories as Christians. And I, I think I have to really consider that part of the purpose of my pain, um, how will that work together for good for me? Um, the strengthening of my faith. And really, I think it's the process. This is at least part of the reason, um, is the process of sanctification. Um, as Christians, we go through that process as we mature in the faith and we become sanctified. We become, in other words, more Christ-like, um, through this process of grief, is it possible for you to become molded more into Christ likeness? Isn't that a wonderful way um, for him to get the glory, for him to draw something good and wonderful out of something horrible and painful? So something else that Nancy Guthrie mentions in her book that I have found has really been a reality for me. When you lose a loved one, um, the reality of heaven becomes, it becomes so magnified. You know, when you think about, let's think about John 14 uh, verses two and three, where Jesus is in the upper room and he promises the apostles. He says, you know, I have to, I have to go away, but I go to prepare a place for you. In my father's house, there are many mansions, right? What a beautiful promise. And that is, as, as Christians, that is where we know our loved ones are. And it's just become such a beautiful reality. 
And we know that the day will come. That promise is ours too. We know that the day will come where we join them there. So I think that really helps us live with a different kind of perspective. It helps us to live today with an eternal perspective. Okay, so I think also the question of submission comes up. Submission. We are to submit to whatever the will of God is, uh, just as Jesus Christ submitted perfectly to the will of his Father. And sometimes, especially when we're grieving or going through something very, very difficult, we have to ask, what is it that God is asking us to submit to right now? And he, like I say, he has his reasons. Um, our, our pain always has a holy purpose. Uh, we'll understand it all someday. But what is he asking me to submit to right now? And I think, again, it's always helpful to look to scripture and to see people we know from scripture submitting. Um, if we look, look at Luke 1, verse 38, we have Mary submitting when she's told by an angel that she is going to give birth to the Savior, um, she says, I am a handmaiden of the Lord. She just fully submits and she accepts. Uh, when we think of Christ in the garden, in Gethsemane, uh, the agony in the garden, where he says, you know, not my will, he says to his father, but your will, your will, right? He's our perfect example. He's the one that we have to look to and emulate. Um, you know, we're told in scripture to die to self and deny ourselves and take up our cross daily and follow him. You know, we have to ask, these are very, very deep questions. How does it all factor into our loss and our grief? And I think if we look to the end of the book of Job, um, we, we can receive such, um, it's so, it's so encouraging. Um, God reveals himself further to Job. Um, we see that, um, he learns a new aspect of, of God and his relationship with God is deepened. Um, he sees God's sovereignty throughout this process his faith grows. Um, Job is, he becomes aware that God is so very faithful and responsive and God will really truly provide for all of our needs. Okay. I hope that that can help even just one person out there. Um, if you want to share anything in the comments, I would welcome that. Um, if you want to pray for my family, I, I would feel just incredibly blessed by that. If you are grieving right now, if you are suffering and you'd like us to pray for you, please include that in the comments as well. Okay. Uh, I will certainly pray for anyone's needs out there. Okay. Thank you so much for joining me. I hope this has helped to God be the glory. I will see you all again soon.